address the needs and the situations of everybody, including me, Father. Speak your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I just want to thank you. You've been so good. Simple song. Deep meaning. I greet you this morning, your destiny, in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I give my respects to Apostle Dr. Fernandez's absence to our pastors. Uh, Pastor Tyrone knows and Dr. Clarence knows and to all of you in your respective places. To those of you who are visiting in your respective organization, in your respective places, I pay homage to you. And I, I think it's an honor to stand before you to declare a word for the Lord. For the time I have before you, I want to speak on this topic, order the path to favor. So the scripture was read by my wife, thank you Michelle. And uh, even though it's the word of God, and people call it the old story, I want to tell you it's an ever-living story. And the truth is, what I'm talking to you about is what I'm going to do this week, because, you know, at the house, if I can bring some order to my chaos, I'm sure my wife will be happy. She'll have a peace of mind. So while I preach to you, I'm actually talking to myself. That all around us, we look for order. See, order speaks to the environment that we enjoy, the environment we live in, what happens to us, what we do, what we allow people to do to us, determines the order that we authorize. I often tell my friends, people treat you the way you let them. So if somebody starts talking to you in a downward manner, personally I say to myself, I don't know who you're talking to, but I'm not him. One time I actually pulled up my driver's license as the guy was talking to me. I said, what is the last name on that license? And he said, Ford. I said, that's not your last name. I'm not your child, so don't speak to me like that. So you've got to teach people to treat you the way you should be treated. But at the same time, it depends on what you give out. You are a walking billboard of who you say you are. Not just who you say you are, but who you really are. Because you can say one thing and do another. And your actions speak so loudly that people pay less attention to your words. So as I thought about this environment thing, I've been praying to God recently for discernment. That I can understand. And, and the challenge here is that when we pray to God for discernment, we think we're always just discerning the situation and the other people. But be careful what you ask for. So the person on your left, turn to them and say, be careful what you ask for. If there's somebody in your right, tell them if you ask God for it, he'll give it to you. So I've been asking God for discernment, right? I've got to acknowledge it's all about him. And like I said, be careful what you ask for because sometimes discernment is about pointing out what you're doing wrong. Not just the other people, what you are doing wrong. And we call it eating humble pie. So be careful the words you speak because you might have to digest them. And, and so, it, and, and it's, it's, it's amazing that when you ask God, that he'll answer you. No long drawn out prayer, just a simple conversation. I said to God, I said, you know, God, I, I want to make sure I'm doing your will. So I need you to help me to understand. And so a situation happened at work, and, and I think I was rather short with the people. You know, I told you my two favorite words over the last eight months have been Lord Jesus. I was in one of those moments, but the other person, the other persons didn't know See, the job I work, I work, in an IT, I work in an IT department at my job, and so that means I can get calls 24-7. Because even though I have a team that, re that reports to me, ultimately, I'm responsible. And so for two months consecutively, I'd gotten a 3 a.m. call about some issues that were going down. Nothing to do with what I had to do, but lack of planning on other people's side. But that didn't negate the fact that there had to be a solution. And so on the third day I was at work and there was another issue that was brewing and some folks decided to call me about something that I thought was really trivial. To them it was important and I really cut to the chase. And I hung up and when I was done about five minutes later the Holy Spirit said, now you know what you did wasn't right. That you've got to call those people and apologize. And you've got to tell those people what's going on. And for a minute, I pushed back. 
Come on, God, they wasted my time. You see the trivial stuff they're talking about? But five minutes later, I sat down and I sent them an email. I said, I, I didn't mean to be short with you, but here's what's happening and I'm still in the midst of this. And, and on the island growing up, they usually had this word that those of you who know the virtue of prayer, pray for me. So I ended my, my email with, listen man, if you know the virtue of prayer, just pray for my team and I. Two minutes later, the word came back. They responded, they said, listen, we have already had conversations. We knew that was not in your character. And don't worry, we've got you covered. So whatever you're going through, so, so a situation that, that, that was one that, that, that was distasteful to them suddenly became an opportunity for prayers to be offered up to the kingdom. And what I want to tell you this morning is sometimes what we think is a crisis, God makes it a classroom. And, and so, so, so we traveled uh, last week to our oldest daughter's graduation in Georgia. I still can't believe that she's a college student. So when we sing the song, Been So Good, Made A Way, I just want to thank you. It's a testimony. Because my oldest daughter's over there, stand a second, Simone. And I remember when she fitted from my wrist to my elbow, and I would walk through the house and swing her like that. And now she comes to me with a driver's license and college schedule, and she can actually borrow the car. So we traveled to her graduation and we came back Sunday night, left our car parked so we can have the convenience of driving back home, got to the car and something went wrong. The car would not start. Somehow this anti-theft mechanism was triggered, would not start. It assumed we were trying to break into our own car. So we were there for an hour struggling. And, uh, and I can tell you I offered some prayers. And I stood and I declared some stuff over that SUV, but it wasn't budget. And, and I, a couple of years ago, I shared to you an issue we had with the, with the key, but we found an, an alternate solution. It wasn't a true solution, we found an alternate solution. And we tried the next day, and so three days later, it actually took three days, two days later, we got the car started. And I, of course, I had a conversation with my father. I said, well, God, help me to understand this. You know, I prayed, I'm faithful. How did this not work? And in the midst of all of that, he said, you know, you need to really fix that key situation. This has been hanging out over two years. You need to bring some order to that key situation. And, but you see, what, what it caused me to step out from it was years ago when I checked it out, just the key itself was going to be about three, four hundred dollars in the U.S. And then to pay customs and now there's VAT, it ended up being a six, seven hundred dollar solution. I figured I didn't have money for that. But the Holy Spirit said to me, you've got to bring order to this key situation. So I went online digging. And what was presumably a five, six hundred dollar issue, I found a $14.99 solution. $14.99. And I said, God, I understand. You were forcing me to bring an order to a situation that had outstanding. So when you ask God for discernment or for stuff, he will bring it to you, but not in the way that you presume he will. So we were looking at order, the path to favor, and we talked about favor earlier this, this, this year. We said favor is an act of kindness beyond what is due or usual, the approval for, the support of. In, in short, favor is about friendliness. And I'd like to tell you that this book, my funny color Bible, this book, is about favor and God is serious about favor and there's no secret about it in case you're thinking he's a sometime God, Jesus stood up and said I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly favor appears 114 times in the Bible and I said blessing is an act of favor that appears some 463 times so can I tell you God is serious about favor but at the same time, he's serious about order. For well, all my years, you could not tell me that what I understood the Bible to mean was that God simply just wanted me to praise and to worship him. And that's all he was concerned about. But I got to understand that all our praise and all our worship is for naught if we're not in order. And if you think I'm talking crazy, the Bible declares that if you have a gift at the altar, but you have off with your brother, leave that gift, go sort of that issue. 
In fact, at the very beginning of the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then the Spirit of God moved upon the chaos and brought order. And that's why he separated night into day and, and he separated the sea from the dry land. God is all about order. And I want you to understand that, that he is about order. And if you consider that his favor is divine and supernatural, if you walk in order, he gives that to you. And so, 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 so God decided, he made man in the garden and man sinned and he decided to put a new way, a new order in place. And I'm oftentimes sat and try to think about this. That we, we're talking about the God of the universe. And yet when it was time for his son to be born, we have the situation of no room in the inn. Have you ever thought about that? That seriously, if God wanted room in the inn, he couldn't make room in the inn? But he had a plan that he was instituting. He had a plan that he was pushing out because some 40 and two generations before, he had made the proclamation that his son would come and redeem mankind. So, so when I thought about that, here's the thing you've got to understand. That from beginning to end, God is about order. When he institutes a purpose and a plan, he wants that from beginning to end to be carried out the way he wants it carried out. Doesn't matter how you feel about it, doesn't matter how you think about it, it's about what he says. And so he sent Jesus to be born. And he was born in a stable. And I've often asked God about that. What, what's up with that? That I'm your child. Why then we find ourselves in certain situations where he said to me, where is a lamb born? But in a stable. And that's what Jesus was. He was a propitiation for our sin. The lamb that was going to be the perfect sacrifice. And he hung out with the shepherds because shepherds tend to lamb and he himself was a shepherd and then, then when at, at the trial of the crucifixion he had mankind to judge jesus but guess what he was about to be a sacrifice and according to the law the sacrifice the, the lamb had to be checked and declared there was no fault found in it but so both herod and, and pilate stood not knowing what they were doing but they declared that there was no fault found in the lamb you see, I want to tell you, even though the crowd said that he had lied and done all these things, it doesn't matter what the crowd is saying. What matters is what God is saying. Because ultimately, the authority comes from God. The authority is given by God. And Jesus pointed out, he said, my father could release angels to come and relieve me. And I, I want to drop this in your spirit that some of you are going through some situations right now. But I want you to remember that God knows every tear you cry. He knows every sleepless night. He knows every rock you bucked your toe on. Even before you've done it, he did it. Imagine this. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, the Samaritan was already on his way before the man got robbed. I'm here to tell you that your help is already on the way. Even though you can't see it, your help is already on the way. You just got to hang in there a little bit longer. So I, I want you to understand this. That regardless of how stacked the deck is against you, or you think the deck is against you, that God can do more with less. That he went from 32,000 to 300. God went from 100% to less than 1%. And then he got the victory. And so some of you are going through some stuff and you're wondering what is it that's happening to you. I want to tell you that he promised that whatever happens to you, he's working it out for your good. And regardless of what you think you see, the wheels are turning and people have been put in place, but he's working it out for your good. So he decided to put a new order, a new way. And that's where we come to our scripture because there was going to be a new testament, a new will. His will now would change. And for that to be a new will, it had to be stated. And in the conversation we read in the text, this was Jesus laying out the new will. He started before and he talked about let not your heart be troubled. But he laid it out what was the new will going to be like. See, under the old law, the fire was presented on the external sacrifice. Under the, the new will, the New Testament, we are the sacrifice. And the fire burns from the inside 